Everyone, yeah, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, so yeah, we'll be talking about Bash and CSVs and kind of command line data analysis in general. Yeah, so am I, uh, yeah, I work at uh, Database Infrastructure at GitHub. Here's my social media stuff. Um, but relevant to this conference, uh, my first job out of school was at this place, the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. Uh, they do a lot of uh, urban, suburban, rural planning for the greater Philadelphia region. And I think I was like one of uh, two developers there at like a hundred person organization. Um, and I think it really uh, yeah, sparked my interest in open data and GIS info and especially, you know, give you the feeling how having like a little bit of programming experience can really go a long way into helping like reduce uh, kind of manual toil and things like that. Uh, so this talk is about using the right tool for the job. Bash is not gonna be great for everything, um, but in certain cases, I think you can get um, a pretty good first pass on your data or logs without having to rely on external tooling. Uh, so why do you use Bash? Um, in certain cases, it can be pretty useful. This article is a little bit tongue in cheek, how um, you know command line tools are 235 times faster than your Hadoop cluster. But I, I think it brings up an interesting use case where you know when you're in the multi gigabyte range, you know uh, opening two gigabytes in Excel or Google Sheets is not gonna be a fun time. And uh, it's really not enough to really make use of, you know, big data tools like Hadoop. Um, but uh, so what are you left with? Uh, you could import into a database like um, SQL or something like that, but that could be, you know, a bit of a hassle if you don't have one up and running already. Uh, or you can do a pass with your command line tools. So when is Bash a good choice to use? Uh, when your data is line-based, all the core utilities understand lines really well. If you have multi-line data, like a, a stack trace or something, then probably Bash is not gonna be a good idea. Next is when you have a consistent structure. CSVs are a great example of that. Uh, I would also recommend it for things like server logs. Um, but you have something like a hard structure, like a JSON or an XML, that would probably be easier to use like a tool specifically for that. First step in any kind of data analysis is to peek at your data, see what you're looking with. Um, so head is a utility that will show you the first end lines of the file. Uh, if you're more familiar with SQL, it's kind of like a select star limit two. Tail is the opposite of that. Uh, it'll show you the last end lines of your file. Uh, so it's like a order by descending limit two. Um, WC stands for word count, but here we're gonna pass the L option to count lines. Um, WC can uh, count a lot of different things, uh, lines, characters, words, uh, probably characters and words are not the most relevant for our CSV file, but um, yeah, if you want to write out a tweet ahead of time to make sure you're under the limit, it can be useful. <laughs> Uh, so to recap, from peeking at our population CSV file, we have a three column CSV, city, state, population. Looks like uh, big cities at the top of the file, smaller cities at the bottom of the file, 761 cities in total. Um, so let's say you have your file. Let's say you don't want all the lines in it. You want, you're looking at specific lines. Uh, grep is gonna be your tool for that. Uh, so that'll search for a string and return all the lines that match your string. Um, you can use the dash V flag, to kind of do the opposite to exclude lines that you don't want to see. Uh, so you can see in this file, uh, Honolulu, is, uh, this is not the population of Honolulu City, it's the census designated place. The same thing with Anchorage and uh, Lexington here, so that's kind of interesting to see. Um, so now that we have the lines that we want, let's say we don't want everything within the line, we want certain things. Uh, we can use cut to chop up the lines in a, a consistent manner. So here, uh, we're getting the first and the third column. So city and population. Let's say I don't want, I don't want to see state. Cut gets really interesting when you can do multiple passes with it. Uh, so let's say at the top here, I have like a, a server log, but I only want the time portion of it. We can do that with two passes of cut. Um, so first, we're gonna chop up the line based off of space. And then we can do another pass that's chopping up the line uh, based off of the, the colon character. So that way we can easily isolate like the exact portion of the data that we want, but you know it, it's not uh, an easily parsable format. 
sort is one of those utilities where it uh, does what it's named. Uh, <laughs> uh, by default, it works off of the whole line alphabetically. But in, generally, in general, we don't want to sort on the whole line. Um, we can give it a key column to sort on. So in this example, we're sorting by uh, state alphabetically. It gets more interesting when we can do multiple key columns. So we're able to do kind of like sort of advanced stuff on the command line here now. Um, so here we're sorting by state alphabetically, and then we're sorting by population numerically. That's what the N there is for. Uh, so it treats it like a number, not a word. Uh, and then the R is for reverse, so it's going to order descending. So uh, you have the biggest cities at the top. Now we can chain things, more, even more things together. Uh, we can start to answer questions like, what are the biggest cities by state? Uh, so we take the sort command that we did in the previous slide, and we can sort it again, giving it the U flag for unique. So what that will do, and we're giving it the, the state column as well. So it'll give us the unique output by state, essentially giving us the, the biggest cities by state here. Uh, another question that we might have is how many cities per state? Uh, yeah, how many cities per state are there? Um, so we can uh, get just the state column, that's the second one, and then we can uh, use unique to and the dash C flag uh, to give us the, the count of how many times that state occurred. Uh, the important thing to note here is that unique expects sorted input. So try to think of sort and unique as a pair together, because otherwise uh, you will not get the output that you want. Uh, yeah, so we can see, yeah, in this file, 178 cities are California, 65 are Texas, 25 are Michigan, which is, uh, yeah, not what I was expecting. So that's cool to see. Uh, another question that we can answer is uh, where does Portland rank? So we can sort the uh, file by population and we can look for Portland. Uh, we can patch the N flag. Uh, and so that'll return us the, the line number that this occurred on. Uh, so we can see that Portland, Oregon is the 26th most populous city in our file. And Portland, Maine is the 537th most populous city. Eventually, we wanted, we'll want probably have to do something with multiple files. Um, so let's say I have a, a file that has like a state FIPS code and a city name, and then I have state FIPS code and the state name. So if I have this data and I want to see city name and state name, how can I join them together? Uh, there's a join command uh, that works pretty much exactly like how you expect a SQL join to work by work with. So it's uh, useful when you have like these type of uh, identifier uh, columns here. Uh, another way to work with multiple files is paste. Paste is kind of weird in that it basically like zips two files together. Uh, so if you don't have like an ID column or something to join on, um, if you pass the dash S option, it'll transpose the rows and columns. Uh, it's generally only useful if you have like a very specific output format that you're looking for, um, but it's there. <laughs> uh, a good example of paste here is, let's say I wanted to add like a, a number to each line of this file that's like a, a row number or something. Uh, sequence is a command that basically prints out, um, you know, one item per line. So what we can do is basically zip out the output of sequence with our population CSV file. So our generated output is we have a number for each line now. Com is an interesting way to compare files. Com produces three columns of output. The first column are lines that are only in the first file. The second column are lines that are only in the second file. And the third column are lines that are in both files. So if you want to do like type of like diffing operations. Um, com is also weird in that you tell it, uh, you pass it a column and then it will not print out that output. So if you wanted only the first column of output, you would pass it two and three. <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird. Uh, in general, I find myself using most of the time this last one, uh, COM12. So that's a, will only return the lines that are in both files. So kind of, uh, yeah, so think of it like a Venn diagram type thing. Uh, 
we don't always uh, get data in the format that we want. We'll have to do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, set is a good option for that. Set is really powerful, um, but I find it best to do for these type of like simple like search and replace type operations. So yeah, we know in our file we have city repeated a bunch of times. I don't want to see city anymore. Uh, we can search for space city and replace it with nothing, and that's what it'll do. TR is a kind of a niche command. It stands for translate. Uh, so you're the way to think about it is you're translating one character set to another. So let's say I wanted to, uh, the first example is translating space to new line characters. So if you have a big long row of things and you can separate it out to be a, a bunch of lines of things. Uh, TR also has the concept of uh, character classes. So you can even do things like upper and lower casing on the command line. And you can even do things like, let's say I have a bunch of numbers, I wanna shift by one. Uh, so you can do that. And it also works with uh, letters. I've thrown a lot of commands out. Uh, let's go through an example. Uh, so throughout this talk, I've used, yeah, this population CSV file. It's got nice three columns, pretty simple to easy and uh, to see what's going on. Uh, where did I get it? So I did not download it directly from the American Fact Finder website. I'm sure you won't be uh, surprised to hear that. But um, I did download all the raw data from uh, the census. Uh, this is what I can download directly. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. Uh, there's lots of great data in there. But let's say I don't want all of it. Uh, so first step, you'll see there's two header rows in this file, which is uh, <laughs> yeah, which is nice to see, I guess. Um, so the first thing, let's get rid of those header lines. Uh, we can use tail for that. So for this version of tail, I'm basically saying, like, start at the third line and give me everything underneath that. So we can get rid of that. Uh, next, there's a lot of columns of output here. Uh, let's only get the columns that we're looking for. And through trial and error, we can figure out that uh, we want the ninth the 10th and the 19th column of output. So this is an important one because uh, you'll see here that actually city and state are quoted field. Uh, so technically, that would be one column of CSV input. In this case, uh, Bash does not understand that really all that well. In this case, it kind of works out in that they're sort of uh, the same. But yeah, if you have more advanced CSV data, uh, Bash, you might have to do some interesting things with Bash to get it to work. Uh, so next, let's get rid of the quotes in our file. Uh, we can use sed to do that, to search for quote and replace it with nothing. Uh, we have the, the G at the end there because of the fact we have multiple occurrences of quotes. Uh, so by default, it'll only look at the first thing and then move on to the next line. Uh, so this with the G, it'll, look, it'll search and replace throughout the whole line. Uh, next, uh, yeah, so we have a, a leading space in the state name now. Let's clean up that. Um, so we can do another pass with said. And now we have our nice three column CSV file. We can save that to population CSV and we're all done. Uh, kind of another fun example would be like, um, the, the Shakespeare word count that you see in all the, the Hadoop uh, examples. So we can download like Shakespeare.txt, um, which clocks in, uh, from Project Gutenberg. So that clocks in about five megabytes, which is not all that much. Um, so, and we can run a bunch of commands and kind of get a word count here. Uh, the, the interesting things here are that we use uh, TR to delete everything that's not a number or a, a letter and a space. So this is using the, the idea of those like character classes. Um, and then we can, so that's the first TR. The second TR will squeeze all the spaces together into one space. That's what, um, and so we're using the space character class because it deals with tabs, new lines, things like that. Um, and then we turn everything into a new line character, all the spaces into new line characters. So that way you get one word per line. Remember all the core utilities like working with lines. And then we lowercase everything, sort unique it, and this is the output we get. So uh, we see kind of the 
what you would expect out of the, the most common occurring words. Uh, when we get down into the, the single digits, does it get interesting? You know, fomans, fomans. Uh, yeah, so this is what we're able to do here. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, all the, the materials, all the, the CSV files and stuff and slides are at this GitHub repo. Feel free to ask me any questions on Twitter or in person here. So thank you.